Welcome to this session, Social Studies for Moby Max. I'm Robin Dixon and I will be your tour guide through this session. Today we will look at Moby Max Social Studies through two points of view. First, we will look at Moby Max through the student lens and what the student sees as he or she works through the Moby Max program for social studies. We will then take a dive into what you will see in your account through the teacher view for social studies. The first thing they'll see is a joke of the day. They will read the joke of the day and then it will take them to a screen like this. The first one that you'll see is the whale, so students will see this whale that provides them a daily challenge activity. Now this daily activity is one that provides um, opportunity for students to do additional work, to play additional games, etc. So that's something that you might want to consider for your students as a motivator. The second icon across the top are the four books. When you click on the four books, or your students click on the four books, they will see all the Moby Max programming available to them that you have given them access to. Now, if students have all programs, to find social studies, your students will click on the third row down, second icon over. So I've gone down three rows and over to the second um, icon in the third row that says social studies, and it is the green square with the globe. So once students click on that, it's going to say social studies, it's going to tell them what they're learning today, so it has built-in learning intentions for them. And so you'll see that this student today is exploring culture. They're looking at what is culture, and as they finish this section, they will move on to cultural religions. Once that section is complete, they'll move on to cultural holidays and celebrations, cultural heritage, and then lesson review. Now, students are not expected to complete all of this work in one day. Um, you might break it down. You might have students log in for 10 or 15 minute, 20 minute time period. And what the program will do is it will continue the lesson from where they finished with the previous session. And so let's go ahead and get started. And students will click the green arrow to move to the lesson It is and more common to walk to work in a city than in a rural area. Martin lives and works in a city. Can you know for sure that Martin walks to work? So you will notice that in this program, number one, there is an audio feature. And this is available to all students. So it is an accommodation or that all students will be able to receive. Now, You'll notice that it read the question, and then I will also read the answers if I wish for it to do so. But before we do that, let's look down here at the very bottom, and it notices and notice that it tells the students they're in the section called What is Culture? And you'll also see that it shows that the student is on problem 7 of 19. So this student logged out and it continued that student from the previous session. And also notice that the student can visually track how far they've gone in the lesson by looking at this bar right here. And I know we have a lot of students that think, how far are we finished? How much more do we have? I'm sure you've never heard that question <laughs> from your students. If students, we can just direct our students to look down here, you'll see how far we are. We can either see that we're in problem 7 of 19 or visually see that we're just a little over a third of the way there. And you'll see that they've also earned some points for bonus games. So let's see what happens when students answer questions correctly and incorrectly. So again, it read to us, it is more common to walk to work in a city than in a rural area. Martha lives and works in a city. Can you know for sure that Martha walks to work? So let's see, it says yes because Martin lives in a city, no because Martin lives in a city, 
No, because Martin is from a rural area, or no, because not everyone in a city walks to work. So let's choose this option, which was the correct one. Notice that when a student is correct, it answers with the green check mark. And the student will then come down to the bottom and click on the next button. It is not correct to assume that everyone in a cultural group is the same. Martin is free to drive to work even though he lives in a crowded city where many people walk. So notice that it also gives additional information and teaching points once the question is answered. Now, if I come up here to the sound button, a student can come up here to the circle with the three lines and click on the sound button. And let's say that this student doesn't want to hear everything read automatically. So um, a student could come in and disable read aloud. Um, they could click sound icons to read text aloud. I'm going to change it to this. Now as the teacher, if you have students that you know need everything read aloud, you can go in and change this once a student has logged in. Um, if you have a student who you know um, can do pretty well on his or her own, but might need this as needed, then you can click this icon, which is what I'm going to do now, because I don't want it to automatically read every time I log in. So, you, so students can adapt the sound changes. So let's go on to the next question. Checking for understanding. Check for understanding. Culture is how a group of people lives. Culture includes many parts of people's lives, such as the types of food they eat, the music they listen to, the clothing they wear. Now, the reason that it went to the question is I went ahead and clicked ahead instead of reading the assignment, which I should have done. And so that was my mistake on this, but I'm going to Every listen. group of people has a culture. However, people in a group may be different from each other even if they share a culture. So let's see what happens when I answer a question. Um, this way. So I would choose both of those answers and go to next. So let's look here at this next one. One reason why culture is important is that a person's culture teaches him or her how to behave. Click on the examples below to learn more about behaviors that are influenced by culture. So students can come down here. And let's say I wanted to listen to this In the one. United States, cars drive on the right side of the road. However, cars drive on the left side of the road in England. Then a student can come down here. They could either read this silently or it will play for them, depending on how you have set it up. And this is important to point out to students. When it has this blue box and says more, they need to click on this because there might be a little bit more of the lesson that didn't show on the screen. This one was just a little bit of the picture, but there are times that it may be an additional text box to read. Now it says decide whether each, each statement is true or false. So let's see what happens if I get some answers correct and some incorrect. So this one says cultures teach people how to behave. True. All of a person's behaviors can be explained by their culture. Oh, and notice what it does. It puts a red X. So I know that that one is not correct. So you will see that I had two of those correct. Now, notice that down at the bottom it says put your thinking cap on and earn four game seconds for this question. So this is an incentive to get students to not just collect, um, correct, or choose rather, all the true answers. So notice that this student would not have earned the whole bonus time in the games. So notice that it says oops, so now I need to go back and correct the missed ones. So once I've corrected them, then it will take me on to the next question. So um, the great feature is that it will not just let a student rush through and hurry on an assignment. 
Let's try one more question before we uh, move on. Although Americans do not all have the same culture, which behaviors are common to most Americans? So, waving to say hello, celebrating New Year's Eve, I'm thinking not, eating dinner around 10 p.m., I think that is about culture. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Shaking hands when meeting someone. Now, I can click off of that one, and you'll notice it told me that one was wrong. And I changed that to the X, and so now I'm good. So, students will continue to walk through the program this way. So, notice that this one is a short answer question where they'll be typing an answer to the question. So, explain the culture of your hometown to someone who just moved there. Share some ideas of things to include our local celebrations, how people show respect for one another, and which languages are commonly spoken there. So, students will continue to work through the lesson um, until you have said it is time to stop or the directions that you have given to students. Now, students can also see how long they spent in the section and how much of that time was actually focused. Notice my focus time was only 11 minutes, but I've also been talking and sharing with you, so my focus time would be a little bit lower. And the final option that students have are the three lines with the three dots. And this shows them the table of contents. And this you'll see shows the students all of the slides that they will see and questions within that section. What is culture? Then cultural regions and so on. And finally, if students wish to go home, uh, to their main screen, they'll click on the house, or they can click on this button to log out. So let's go back home. And so, social studies for Moby Max is that simple. So the next part of this presentation, we will look at social studies Moby Max from the teacher perspective. Let's spend some time now looking at Moby Max Social Studies from the teacher point of view and what you will see from your perspective from the program for social studies. We will also look at some of the settings that you can change for your students within the program. So let's begin. Just like students, you will log into Moby Max through Clever Portal. And I have my Clever Portal pulled up, and I'm going to go to Moby Max, just like the students do. And then it is going to take me to this screen. You will see your quick links at the left-hand side, and you will also see across the top, you'll see differentiated learning, quick checker, and interactive learning, or interactive class. So, the tab that we will be working in um, for right now is Differentiated Learning. And so, when I go to Differentiated Learning, you will see that when I scroll down, you will see the Adaptive Social Studies. So, let's click on Adaptive Social Studies and see what is in that tab as a teacher. So, the first thing that you will see is a snapshot. And so this shows you how the students are doing and progressing in your class. Now, notice that Wednesday, March 17th was the last time that the demo student, who I was just logged in as, completed the work. And notice that it shows that that student had a 60% on that work for today, a 90% um, focus time with work and then it shows the current lesson. Now you'll notice that um, I have lots of students from the district in, from different schools and things. Your list will not be this long, but you will see that it will show you what lessons 
and items they are working on. Then the next one that we have across the top in the blue tabs is progress and this will show the progress of their lessons. It will show the lessons that students are on and then I can come down here to the gray tab and notice that underneath lessons it shows completed. It shows a sign and we'll get to that um, in just a moment. We see short answers, so you'll remember that on that other question that we were student was working on, it had a short answer, so we would be able to see progress on that. Goals and IEP, so if you have set goals for your students or you are using um, this to track data for GEI, for example, you can house that here. And then library. Now, the library is an amazing place to find lessons to tie into what you're working on in social studies to assign to your students. So let's go to grade three. And you'll notice that when I go to grade three, it is going to show all the lessons that are available for third grade. And you'll see that we were just in exploring cultures. And you'll see um, what is culture, cultural religions. Uh, so that is all of those lessons that those students were working on. And notice that I can select this and it will uh, select these for students. So I can select the lessons that I want for students and so on. And let's say I'm looking, clicking on what is culture. Notice also that there are worksheets that you can print off for students to use as well. So this is a great feature from the student perspective, or from the teacher perspective um, as well. So you can also print these off for your students if students are needing them printed. Um, you can also print them from there and see what the lesson looks like for your students before you assign it. So let's go back over to that tab that said lessons. It is um, the third one from the left. And it's, so let's click on lessons. And let's look at assign. So I can assign a lesson to my entire class. So let's do that. So. Again, I'm going to come over here to grade three, and let's say I'm looking at communities. Where do you live? And let's say I've looked and I know that's exactly what I want to assign to my students. I can click the select button and notice that it's a blue check. So um, I have assigned, I'm ready to assign that. And then I can simply come up here and there are three hidden little gray tabs. One says assign. So let's click the Assign tab and see what happens. So you will see a new box appear and it's going to say Select Sequence. So where do I want this lesson to go? Do I want it to go, take priority and move to the top? Do I want them to complete that lesson after their current lesson? Or do I want it to move to the bottom? And I can choose uh, where I want that to be. And then I can set student display options. Do you want to take to do you want to re, to place the lesson in the student's assignment tab where the student can directly see the lesson themselves? So let's click on this. And I can set a due date. So I'm going to come down here and let's say I want to give students two weeks to work on that. I can assign, and now I have assigned a social studies lesson to my students. So this is a great feature um, as a teacher to assign specific lessons to what you are studying in social studies. And then it will appear in the student's assignment tab for you to um, have your students complete. So one of the things that I can do also when I'm finished 
and I've assigned that this to go back to my home button. And I am now back and I can also um, do this through differentiated learning and I can also do it through my quick tabs. And so that is a great way to connect Moby Max to your social studies learning. So you can also use your quick links to assign a social studies lesson or an assignment in any content area. So if you go to your click links, um, you will look for the fourth gray tab, uh, tab down that says tools in all capitals. And underneath that, you will see assign lesson. So I can find and assign this way. So notice I can search by keywords and I can also search by topic. So I can come down here and click social studies and um, I can choose a lesson that's in my grade level or out of my grade level so you can assign things. If you're a third grade teacher, you can assign a second grade lesson, a fourth grade lesson, and so on. So let's go back to third grade. And you will see that I can come down here to communities and I can click that arrow and I can assign all of those lessons underneath communities and I will click assign at the bottom and notice when I do it this way I can select all students or I can select specific students. So let's say I just wanted to give something to one student I can do that and notice that you'll see when I move over to the right hand side it looks like it did before where it has select sequence and display options and then I can assign to that student or students. So there are two ways to assign within Moby Max. So let's go back to our home screen. And the final piece of information that I want to show you are some ways that you can adapt this for your students looking at um, success criteria for mastery of an assignment and so on. So here's what I can do. I can come into a student setting and I'm going to go in and show you as an individual student but please know that you can also do this for your entire class. So when I come in here you will see that I can set um, that I can assign lessons automatically, I can set how many skills I want students to do, I can assign time for a student, and so on. So I can say I want students to work 15 minutes a day or I want Johnny to work 15 minutes a day and I want the rest of the class to work 20 minutes a day. So when I go up to these tabs at the top, um, you'll see I'm in for one student my general settings for this student, notice that I can adapt and change the passing score. So let's say this is a, something that we've worked really hard on and I want to know if students know it, I can change their mastery criteria for their passing score. Or let's say that demo demo student. Um, I know that demo demo student sometimes wants to rush through work and not take um, his or her time and I want to make sure that this student is really focused and paying attention I could change that mastery criteria for demo demo student from 70 to 80 percent and I can also change the practice time the idle practice time um, between pauses I can turn on or off lessons for just that one student and then I can also save and close and I'm not going to save for right now so but if you were to hit save those features would be saved automatically and yes I want to go ahead and move on so you can change settings for a student 
or a student within social studies as well as the other programs. And so that is a brief overview of Moby Mac Social Studies from the student perspective as well as the teacher perspective. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Again, I'm Robin Dixon, the Social Studies ELA Consulting Teacher for Pre-K through 5th grade.